Hey everyone, today we're gonna make a liquid density tower. This is gonna help us learn about, well, liquid densities. That's that science sound. <laughs> Let's get to it. All right, Isla, so today we're gonna make a liquid density tower. And we have a whole bunch of different liquids, fluids. This is the finished version of our liquid density tower. Now to do this at home, you're gonna take nine different liquids and fill them up to about a half a cup. There's dish soap, there's whole milk, there's maple syrup, there's corn syrup, there's honey, there's vegetable oil, there's water dyed. There is rubbing alcohol and lamp oil. Excellent, so we have all of those. I'm gonna pour all of those in, in this order. The first three, the corn syrup, the maple syrup, and the honey, the, all those three are dense enough that you can just pour them right in and they'll hold no matter pretty much how you pour them in. But you don't wanna, you wanna keep the sides as clean as you can because you're gonna need those sides clean to put in all of the less dense liquids. We're gonna start pouring them in and then we'll start to see what's happening. We'll talk about it then, okay? You have at it, grab the honey. Yeah. All right, give it a turn, see what you got. You may need a spoon to, to dig no, it on out. No, it's gonna, it's gonna roll, you're good? All right, you get it all out, let's get it in. Boom, we'll get the rest of it out so we knock that down. All right. Let's grab the corn syrup and you're gonna pour it in there slowly, gingerly. Try not to hit the sides because you'll need your sides clean for later. There you go. So let's start to, there's a little bit of difference. This one right here is a little bit more clear and that's more dense, just like the honey was. This is gonna be easy, okay. but it. Take your time. Now look, see what's happening? Now we have a little more definition. Oh yeah, now that's darker than these. You're gonna take your turkey baster and you will sap it out of your cup and you put it right along the side here and you'll give it a squeeze and do it gently and slowly and it'll go down and it'll create these nice little layers here. Now it's time for the milk. So we're gonna use a turkey baster and that's gonna give us the ability to control it a little bit better. Fill it up, squeeze it, squeeze it before you put it in there. There you go. All right, now, you can't take it right over here. Now remember, go down, shoot it right on the side. Usually put your left hand like right where my finger is. There you go. There you go. All right, great, we got the milk in there. High five. All right, so now we're moving on to the dish soap. Look at what we have. So you have, you have your layers, now they're more defined. So you have your honey layer, you have your corn syrup layer, you have your maple syrup layer, you have your milk layer, and you have your soap layer. Liquid density towers are a great way to start the discussion about density. Density is essentially how much stuff is inside a particular object. And go slow. When you do it too fast, here's what happens. See how it penetrates all the layers? So try to do it again really, really slow so that we can line it up and it sits right up on top. Okay, same thing, Put it. Put your use your left hand to guide it, Put it right next to the glass and take your time. Try to control it. Vegetable oil. Yes. All right, what is your prediction? Well, what should happen? If this is more dense than that, what should happen to the vegetable oil when you put it in there? It should get stuck. Yes, that is absolutely correct. Let's give it a shot. Let's see if that's true. This hands-on experiment is a great way to give your child an opportunity to experience density First hand. Is there a little bit more here? I want you to take the honor. You want me to? Oh, okay. Yes. I get to crack at this? I learned from watching you. <laughs> you taught you taught me. The student no, didn't. has become the teacher. It goes into the green, but then like blows up faster than we can in the pool. Green is more heavy. It's not the color that has the weight or the density, honey. It's the fluid itself. So this could be any color because remember, remember we just made the green food coloring for the rubbing alcohol. So it could have been blue or red or whatever it is, right? So it's not the color that, the color doesn't have any weight. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now you've built your liquid density tower. Now we have all of these little pieces from our house. We have some beads, we have some tomatoes. We, we had a ball, as you can see there, that floats and we have a bunch of dice and a bolt that's somewhere down there in the bottom. One of the things we did was we let Isla see if she could predict which level each item will go to. 
and there were a few surprises in there, and I think you guys might be surprised as well. So give it a shot and have some fun. Okay. Wait, uh, let me get my lab coat. Feel good? Feel smart? <laughs> All right, let's do it. I think it's gonna stop like right here. Which okay, so that was so we had the milk. Okay, so give it a shot. Let's see. Let's see what level it stops on. Wait, I see it. I Where see is it? it? Where is it? It's is that right it right there? there? It's at the top of this. Okay. All right. Cool. So good call. Good. Uh, good job. Nice guess. Let's take something bigger and see if the density the in the solid makes a difference. It's probably gonna, I think it's gonna be like about right here. Let me feel it, is it heavy? Is it heavy? Ooh. Hmm. I think it might go down to the, to the, this line right here. All right, let's see, let's give it a shot. Oh, wait, it's. Where'd it go? It's at, it's in the middle of right here. That's interesting. Now you would think. That's close. You would think that because the tomato is heavier than the popcorn kernel that that it would go lower but why wouldn't it because it it's because it probably because it isn't as dense let's try the lid try the lid i'm just gonna try it yeah this just, will be a mystery <laughs> all right, yeah, let's close your it. eyes okay open oh it's staying off the bread it's just floating ah it's like a little boat I'm pretty sure the, the lid is comparable in weight to the popcorn kernel and maybe even weighs more. So again, density is what this is all about. Ball. Ball. It That's gonna sit, where is it gonna? Float up. Yep. <laughs> there you go, buddy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've seen, we've seen that before. Ooh. Either of what'd you learn? I learned that some liquids are more dense than others. Yes, absolutely. We hope you and your family enjoy making your own liquid density tower. Let us know how it goes in the comments and be sure to share what you've learned with the Show Me How community. Thanks again for watching. <laughs> for a long time, scientists have been baffled by the smallness of the atom. Hey, I'm Jesse. I have three boys, Diego, Zion, and Kingston. I know that reading is important. That's why I encourage them to do it as much as possible. One way to do that is by placing books all over the house. I'll show you how. <laughs> uh, stir the water just a little bit. Put the chicken. Put the chicken. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love cooking. And sometimes my boys follow me into the kitchen, and sometimes they're helpful, and sometimes they're not. So I gotta find ways to keep them occupied so I can cook. How do I do that? Bam, a stack of books right next to me. I get to cook dinner and I'm happy. They get to read their books and they're happy and dinner gets done. So then after the water stirs a little bit, we put it on the chicken and then we dance a little bit around the kitchen. A little bit in the kitchen. <laughs> awesome. What about yours, Kingston? A bear. A bear? That's cool. This one's got cool colors in it. Here's the deal. The more kids see books, the better they feel about them. It's all about familiarity. And if you place books all around the house, they'll become familiar fast. Putting a basket of books in the bathroom is one of the best ways to squeeze in more reading time. You can even get some waterproof bath books. Show your kids that you like to pick up books wherever you are, and they'll learn to do the same. This one's a no-brainer. You gotta have books next to the bed. It makes it so much easier to grab them at bedtime. You can get fancy containers, but for me, a good old shoe box works just fine. Cause it bit my fingers so. When reading becomes a part of the routine, books become an important part of kids' lives. My kids love to wake me and my wife up super early, especially on the weekends. So we told them they had to read a book before they can come in. And that just got us 10 extra minutes of shut-eye. Don't forget to keep books in the car. It's a great way to squeeze in some extra learning, whether you're going on a long trip to grandma's house or just a quick trip to the store. Let's say I have a ton of laundry to fold. Well, I'll put a stack of books next to me, and if Diego's hanging out with me, I'll have him read a book, 
And when I'm done folding all this laundry, I'll sit down with him and we'll read a book together. Sometimes your kid will bring you a book at a random time. And let's face it, as parents, life gets busy. But you know, once in a while, just stop what you're doing, drop to the floor and read with them. There you go. Books everywhere means reading everywhere. And that's a good thing. Mother Goose Club wants to know how you boost book time at your place. So share pictures and videos by hashtagging them Mother Goose Club. Prefer to type your comments? Let us know what's on your mind below. And don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about new videos. Until next time, keep stacking those books. See ya. And sometimes these little guys follow in here. Ugh. Books become an important part of kids' lives. Zion, you know you weren't supposed to be up here. My kids love to wake up <clears throat> Here's a secret weapon. Our kids love to wake our... How many times are you gonna keep on doing this? My kids love to wake... Jeez, Louise. Until next time, keep those stacked. It's this mic in front of me is making me nervous. That was a... <laughs> And until next time, it's a great, a great, or a quick grocery run to, ugh, 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 my brain just stopped. Let's do one more time. Yeah. I can't read. Just look at the pictures. It's one of the best ways to, ugh. Mother Goose Club wants to know how you boost, boost, how you boost, wow, that's gonna be a weird one. Boost. Does that, does that sound funny or is it just me? My Latino accents coming in really strong there. Hashtag videos and pictures. Ugh. Share pictures and videos by hashtagging Mother Goose Club. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're gonna show you a game we call ABC Slam Duck. It's a beanbag toss game that gives your kids an opportunity to work on some of those early literacy skills. So, let's get started. All right, guys, so we got some bean bags, we got some letters, and we have some words, and we're gonna play a few games. You guys ready to play? Yeah. All right, come on. Attach your letter or word cards to some bins, and then you call out a word or the letter, and then you give the kids a chance to throw the bean bags to the corresponding bin. Here. Oh, that's, bro, that's pretty good. <laughs> An example of how that might work is to say, hey, Lennon, take the red bean bag and throw it in the bin that has the L on it. So that gives her an opportunity to work on primary colors as well as working on the letter recognition. Now we have our letter cards, we have our word cards, we have our sealable plastic bags, we have a bowl of beans, we have a pair of scissors, we have some tape, and we have several little felt patches. Oh, and we have some glue. So, now we're gonna put all those things together to make our bean bags. So we're gonna start off by taking this bigger plastic bag and turning it into a smaller bag for the bean bags. Make the second cut. Now I'm gonna make a small bag of the Ziploc bag. I'll take my tape. Right there. Then I'm gonna fold it over to make an edge. Take another strip here. Didn't have too much, just cut the ends off. Now I have an itty bitty bag for my itty bitty beans. Load these up. This actually might be fun for the kids to help you out with too. Now you take the bean bag and you place it over here in the center of your felt. Line that felt with glue. You can use a hot glue or a super glue or pretty much whatever you have around the house that'll work on fabric. You'll take your matching felt and you'll press it around the edges. Just be sure to allow this glue or any other glue to dry before you try to use the bags. In the end, your bean bag will look like this and you're ready to go. The cool part about these bean bags is that once you make them, you have them and you can use them for other activities as well. So you pick a letter, which, le which letter are you gonna pick? B. B, all right, let's give it a toss. Let's see if she gets it. Let's see if she gets it. <gasps> oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, Lennon, it's your turn. It's like your turn, all right. What, what letter are you gonna try to toss yours into? She can get it. Yeah! Girl, good job, all right. Okay, okay, go on, right, one more time. You hit it, you, you hit this. I know you can do it. 
Yeah, yeah, see, I told you, I told you to do it. Yeah, good job. After the kids get used to the letters and words on the bands, then you can sort of step it up a notch. You can start keeping score, or you can even have them step back a little bit further, see if you can get them more engaged, more excited. All right, cool, when I count to three, we're gonna jump right over into our spots. Okay, ready? One, two, three, let's get it. All right, okay, all right. Here's what we're gonna do, guys. You guys get to pick whichever bin you wanna throw it in. Lennon, since you're the youngest, you go ahead and pick which one you want to try to toss it in. That's right. You toss it in. Oh, it's okay. Okay, give it a shot again. Give it another shot. Oh, that's a good shot. Hey, Isla, now which one do you want to try? You know what? Try, try the, try for the L. Hit that, hit that L for your sister. Hit that L for Lennon. Oh, it's pretty close. Right. Keep going. Shoot, shoot the bag over. Let's see, see if we hit that L one. Yay, there you go. Good job. Good job. Let me see your celebration dance. Not hit it. Dance, not sing. There you go. Good job. Let me see your celebration dance. <laughs> we're having a lot of fun, but we're also exercising some letter recognition and some word recognition as well. Yeah. So I changed up the letters, and now they are words. here. They're words, Ben. <laughs> Match it up. There you go, purple bag, purple linen. But we also got an opportunity to really work on some hand-eye coordination, which really went a long way, especially with Lennon, who was doing a great job, uh, really helped build her confidence. I can't wait yeah, it's good. You you're always I cheering for yourself. It's a good thing. All right, well, all right what, Isla, what are you shooting for right now? Jimmy, Jimmy. Uh, school. School, okay, all right. Oh, look, here you go. Linen. Nice, nice. good job. You can do it. Yeah, on the first shot, that a girl, nice. That a girl, oh nice, look at today, and have a celebration, it's time to celebrate. There you go. <laughs> wow, wow, okay. Benjamin, are you all done? Yeah. Yeah, can you say may, I, be, excused, Please. Hi, I'm Sarah, and this is my son, Benjamin. Did you know that talking to your baby is one of the most important things you can do to help his brain develop? It's true. Even though he doesn't understand everything I'm telling him, his brain is making important connections every time we chat. So I talk to him all the time. I'll show you how. I talk to Benjamin through everything I do, even the everyday stuff, because it helps him learn new sounds and words. I look at him while I talk because seeing my expressions helps him understand how to communicate. Benjamin, would you like some scrambled eggs this morning? Mm-hmm. You wanna watch mama while I make them? Yeah? All right, first mama's gonna crack the egg. Put that in there. Do you hear that sound? Do you hear the cracking noise? Listen. Oh, wow. Can you say crack? Crack. Good job, buddy. That's great. All right, now mama's going to mix, 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 and stir, stir, stir. Do you want to help me? Yeah. Yeah? Can you stir that for mama? Mix, 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 stir, stir, stir. See, mama put the yolks into the bowl and we stirred it around and now mama's going to pour it into the pan. You wanna see? Watch mama. Pour it in the pan. Wow. Benjamin, would you like some berries while mama makes your eggs? Ah. Berries? Berries. Good job, buddy. Can you say berry? Yeah. Do you like strawberries? Yeah, strawberries are so delicious, aren't they? Don't be afraid to use big words. Even if Benjamin doesn't understand what I'm saying, he's hearing new sounds, and that's really important. Benjamin, I think your eggs are ready. Oh, yum. Let's pour them in a bowl so you can have some yummy eggs. All right, let's put this back on the stove. And let's blow your eggs because they're really, really hot. Can you blow them with me? Good job. Thanks, buddy. Blowing on them makes them cooler. All right. 
Here you go. You can eat them now. They're nice and yummy. Can Mama have a bite of your eggs? No. Oh, Mama's gonna eat some too. Mmm. 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 Yummy. Yum, yum, yum. Can Mama have a bite of your hand? No. Because <laughs> it's so yummy. Mama can't help herself. You're so yummy. You just. Mm. Gonna eat you up. Listen to your baby. If he shows interest in something, tell him all about it. And if he makes noises, repeat them back to him. This will show him that you're really paying attention. All done? All right. Can you count your fingers with me while we wipe? One, two, three, four, five. Good job. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Yay! Good job, buddy. All done. Try chatting of your little ones at home. You'll find that even if they're not using words, they have a lot to say. And we need your tips. Share with us how you talk to your little ones by hashtagging pictures and videos with Mother Goose Club or commenting below. And while you're at it, subscribe to be the first to know about our new videos. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hi, I'm Sarah, and this is my son. Okay, sorry. Hi, I'm Sarah. Let me do that again. Every time we chat, talk, chat, 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 chat. Bless you. Oh, where is the okay. tissue? I'm staying loose. <laughs> Did you hear that? I mean, you probably didn't, but my stomach went right as it started. <laughs> I talk. Sorry, hair. Good grief. Can you help mama blow? Mm. No. I talk. <laughs> Did it again. I talk Benjamin through. No. Yes, I do. Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be afraid to. <laughs> because it helps him, well, nope, it doesn't. <laughs> the ending. Today's activity, we'll be working with sensory bags. It's a cheap and easy way to help your kids develop language skills through sensory play. Some of the skills we'll be working on today are letter recognition and writing, sight word recognition, as well as phonics. Today we are going to do some letter tracing and Isla you may do some other stuff, do some words. Lynn, you're going to do some letters, so first things first. So we've gathered our materials and now I'm going to show you guys how to make some sensory bags. It's really, really easy. Add hair gel into your storage bag. Dab in there. If you're making colorful sparkle bags, put a few drops of the food coloring and glitter into the bags with the gel and mix. Add in your letter magnets. Close the bag by zipping it up. Spread the hair gel and magnets around with your hands. You may want well to keep a paper towel or a rag handy just in case. Can't get messy. Make sure that the magnets are facing upward. Once your magnets are facing upward, you can tape your bag or bags onto the table for security. You can also use colorful sprinkles or rice instead of gel. Then, instead of letter magnets, you can place a sheet of paper underneath with letters or words on it. And you can do a word search. And if you, wait, wait, wait. And if you take away the P. Ram. And if you take away the R. Am. Look how many words you have right there in front of you. Okay. And now I have a name. Sam. <laughs> This is also a great way to get in some sight word practice. Isla was able to see, search, and organize some of her CVC words. That's consonant, vowel, consonant words like cat, hat, and bat. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. Pat. Pat. All right, let's see how fast you can do it. Oh, my gosh. Ah. There you go. Cheer on, man. Give us a new color. Go, Isla. Go, Isla. There you go. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Love, 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 love. Nice. Sensory play is great hands-on learning. The more engaged all the senses are, the more connections kids make to the material. It's experiential learning. Once you get to the bottom, then you can just sort of push, push them out of the way that way. Ah, okay, okay, I got it. We'll take the letter B, we'll shove that in there. Now you, I'm gonna do this. Now, trace, now you can trace out the letter B. 
get it real clean. That's, that's the letter B. So when working with my youngest daughter, Lennon, we spend more time working on letter recognition and letter naming. With letter recognition, that's just the ability to recognize the shape and the size of the letter. You put it in there. Yeah, there you go. See, you can do it too. That's the letter N. The letter N says, mmm. Can you make that sound? You say, mmm. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. With letter naming, we wanted to recognize more that the shape of the letter is actually associated with a name. We also tapped into some of her sound knowledge. You know what sound the letter B makes? <laughs> like, in, cool. like in Brandon. No, Lord, the B is for Brandon. We have some new bags, and you have a bunch of color over here, so what you can do with that, you can write words and make letters and do all sorts of things. Now, you haven't spread your paint yet. Go ahead and spread that across, just like a tube of toothpaste. Push from the back, and it'll be easy. There you go. Once you mix it up and all the colors and stuff, you'll start to see how the colors mix and you get those uh, in-between colors and stuff, those uh, secondary colors and those color blends that you were talking about, like turquoise. the turquoise. Yeah, stuff like that. And violet. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Purple and blue make violet. Yes. Get uh, over and let's see what you Matt. got. Matt. Matt. So that would be the letter M. M, okay. Nap. Nap. That's cool. After we're done with this, it'll be time for a nap. No. What kind of other shapes can you come up with? You do a circle. Do a circle. Do a circle. Hat. Make it as round as you can make it. Ooh. Yes. Yes. Did you know that a circle is basically the same as the letter O? Another O. Make another O. Yeah. See. If you're having fun making O's, you keep making O's. I O. You know what happens when you put two O's, two O's together? It makes the sound ooh. That's correct. Did you catch on to that? Ooh. And if you do three, it's ooh. <laughs> <laughs> By having something tactile, something for them to play with, their attention spans were much longer than they would have been if I had just sat down and said, what is this letter? What is this number? Having the experience with the girls with the sensory bags is really cool. So one of the things you see is that they take a lot of initiative in designing the task for themselves. <laughs> she, her. She, she is a cat on the another She is. Letter. She is. Whoever, whoever she is, she's beautiful. She. She. That, that even better. Have fun learning while playing. Today we have another colorful and creative way to prompt some early literacy play with your kids. We've got a few materials here that we've gathered for this activity, but the materials are just the beginning. We're pretty sure you're going to laugh, pretty sure you're going to learn, so let's get crafty and let the learning begin. So for today's activity we used a wide range of materials. We used construction paper, we used pipe cleaners, glue. Play-Doh, cardboard, and felt. And we even used some ornamental decorative pom-poms. You're really just gonna do some twisting and turning and some clipping where needed. Okay. Do you say Q? Wait, oh. You're gonna make yeah. Q! Q! Uh, which one are you gonna make again? K. K, interesting. I All right. see. I see you. I'm making a K. There you go. That is a pink. You know that's pink, right? Yeah, I like pink and purple. I will see if you can spell the word. It's symmetry. See if you it's the same. If you cut it in half, it's the same. Nice. That's right. Oh. What other words can you spell with an O and an X? You have any, you have any ideas? Box. There you go. Box. Oh, you know what? We need. Are there any? Do we do we move the L around? Did you grab the L? I can we need one. L. Make 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 you. Oh, you're in a big L. Nice. Look <laughs> look. I was kind enough to make you an L. So let's make let's spell you. Can we spell your name? L. Look, you have an E. L. You want to make another L? Make it. Go for it. Let's see what you got. Let's see what you got. Let's see what let's see what you can do. Go ahead. Just you just gotta do it like this. You just put a little crick in it. Put the little put a little notch in it. Right. Okay. Almost. That's <laughs> very, very, very close. That's a V. Very, very close. But it might be a more of a V. But let's try to spell your name. Let's see. L E J N N. A oh, where's that O we made? Here. You put the O right there. Put the O at the end of those N's. Put it right there. 
I found him. Linen! Linen, that's your name, baby girl. L-E-N-N-O-N. The next set of materials that we've gathered for our letter play are the marker, construction paper, and some Play-Doh. We're gonna make a letter. B for Brandon. All right, great job getting the Play-Doh, guys. All right, let's open up the Play-Doh and see what we got inside. There are a couple of different ways you could do this. Now, you could take those and you could actually trace over them. Like, I did a couple over here. I don't know what happened to do. Check this out. I did a couple over here and you could put them right on top. So that's the letter C. So what you would do is you get the Play-Doh and you see if you yeah. put it right on top. All right, so so you have the letter C there. Can you say this? Can you say C? C! All right, and what sound does the letter C make? What sound does it make? <laughs> can you say, can you say, can you say <laughs> There you go, good job. All right, e. here, you wanna move on to the next one? Yeah! Here, you can- I wanna do this one. You wanna do the E? Okay, good. Now here's what we do, like, Isla, check this out. What I was saying is that maybe if you like put it down and then you can just sort of manipulate it from there. If you put the, I these right here, there you go. A pretzel. Oh, nice! I you made put, a put twist the, pretzel! Oh, and you put, some, put the salt on it and everything, okay. But that's the letter D. D. One more way that you can explore your letter learning. We have a few of these fluffy balls here. We have some glue. We have some cardboard and cardboard letter cutouts. And we have some felt. The whole goal is to take this and end up with something that looks more like this. We are going to take these felt pieces and we're gonna decorate our letters. Okay. We have pipe cleaners on this too. So we can do a combination of different things and then we can top, we can put these on them or whatever we want to do. So, have at it ladies. A clean one. Yeah. So put the glue right there and then we'll wrap it. I'm gonna spread it out with this little stick right here. I think that's what it's for, so we can manipulate the glue without using our fingers. No, so yuck. Here, put, put it down, put it down. Use your fingers, there you go. And then, when you get ready, you can move on. You're gonna do the purple piece, okay? Actually, you know what, at this point, you might need to start wrapping your A's like on the inside. Does that make sense? Yeah, press it down there yeah. a little bit and let it you know, let it dry as best you can. Yeah, yeah bam, exactly. I'm putting fluff on my little L. Put, maybe put a little bit more. That is tight. the wall. This is a little A for I. This is the letter L for Linen! So we engage in the crafts as we always do with an emphasis on early literacy development. So with Linen, we really spend a lot of time working on letter recognition. With Isla, we spend a little more time working on words and spelling. The girls had a whole lot of fun reaction today and a lot of that comes from the engagement with the activity, the engagement with the crafts. That led to us having some real opportunities to connect, as well as them having good memories surrounding their learning experience. So during this video, we've offered you a few suggestions about how you can use a wide variety of different materials to create early literacy play, and in this particular instance, creating letters. The possibilities are literally endless. You can look around your house, find things that you may have that we didn't even think of, and use your imagination. And I guarantee you, if you use your imagination, your kids will start to use their imagination. You'll have a great time, and you'll learn a lot. Hi, I'm Kira, and this is Carolyn. She's my babysitter and also my friend. <laughs> We're going on a leather hunt. At the flea market. Yes, we are. Before kids can learn how to read, they need to be able to recognize letters and relate them to the sounds they make. So when we're out and about, we like to do fun things like letter hunts <laughs> to work on letter sounds. We'll show you how. <laughs> All right, Kira, let's hunt for letters. Look, there's letters on that sign. Oh, yeah. What letters do you see? E and N and T. Awesome! Do you know what word that is? Let's sound it out together. Enter. Enter. Awesome! All right, Kira, let's go inside and look for more letters. Look, there's a huge S. Whoa, that is a huge S. 
When you find a letter, try to think of a fun way to talk about the sound it makes. Hey Kira, what sound does an S make? That's right! Can you think of an animal that starts with the letter S? Snake! That's right! How about skunk? Seal! Seal, good job! Let's go find more letters. D! Awesome! What sound does a D make? D. D, that's right. What's that? Door. Door. All right, let's see if there are any other letters in here. P! P, that's right! What sound does a P make? What fruit is that? Pear. Pear. Do you know any other fruit that starts with P? Pineapple. Pineapple. I love pineapple. So good. Anything else? What about a peach? <laughs> peach. Perfect. Look, another P. You're right. That is another P. Do you know what that says? Let's sound it out together. Pick. Pick. Pick up, up your, your toys. toys. Yes, good job. You're so smart. Kara, let's go find some more letters. Let's go. <laughs> look, they'll send us on the snow globe. Oh, yeah. Let's look at this one. What letter is that? L. L. That's right. What sound does an L make? Oh. Oh, right. What other letters do you see on here? An O, an N, a D, an O, and an N. You are so smart, Kira. What word does that spell? London. London. <laughs> right, give me five. You are so awesome. So let's go find more letters. <laughs> w. <laughs> That's right. Can you think of some words that start with W? Water. Water. Why? Why? What else? Walrus. Walrus. What about whiskers? Whiskers. <laughs> whiskers, that's right. You are so smart. Letters are everywhere. I know. When kids realize that letters are all over the place and not just in storybooks, they begin to understand just how important they really are. Whoa, look at all those letters. What letters do you see? I see a B. A, and I see a P, a P, and an N, and an N. Cat, hat, hat, bat, sat, rat. You are so smart, girlfriend. What letter is this, Kara? M. What sound does an M make? Mm. I see a letter. This is my favorite letter. C. C. C for Carolyn. You pick a letter. K. K. K for Kira. Yeah. <laughs> what sound does the K make? K. K. Just like a C. Just like a C. Go on a letter hunt with the kids in your life and let us know how it goes by hashtagging Mother Goose Club on social media. As always, we'd love to hear from you. So type any comments into the box below. And don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about our new videos. Bye! I just want to play with all of these toys! Because I love ducks, <laughs> I love puppies. Today's activity is called Exploding Numbers. We're using simple things like stickers, paint, and other manipulatives to teach your child early math concepts. Manipulatives are simply something that children can use with their hands. It really builds those fine motor skills and allows them to really bring the mind and the body together. I'm gonna show you how to make this a fun, simple math activity for your children. Silas, today we're gonna to do something called exploding numbers. We're gonna use paint. We're gonna use pom-poms. You ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'm excited. I'm excited too. Mm -hmm. 
This is a really simple craft that you probably already have all the materials on hand for. We get to do numbers. You like numbers, don't you? Wait, what? zero? Yeah. One, two, three again? You're right. Zero, one, two, and three. This is how we created our exploding numbers. First, we took a piece of paper and we just printed out some numbers on it. I cut them out so that Silas could attach them to a page. All right, so take your glue. I know. Oh, you know, huh? You're so smart. All right, put the glue all over that. Stick it anywhere you want on the page. You can add something like stickers. Simply ask them how many dots go along with each number. Now we're gonna put stickers. Stickles by the number. That's right, you need how many right here? One. And then? Lots of boys. Right here. Two. There you go. Okay. No, six. Six? What, what color do you want for six? This craft is a really great way to teach number sequencing as children get to recognize numbers and also how they flow in order. It also teaches subitizing, which is the recognition of looking at numbers in a set. So when they look at three stickers, they recognize immediately that there's three there. How many bright pinks do you have? Four. Let's count them. Four. Right, three. And how Four. many purples? So how many purple and pink all together are there? How many do you have? Can I count all of them? Let's count just the pink and purple, and then you can count all of them if you want. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're right, six. And then this is where your little one can really get their creative juices flowing. Put some paint simply on a plate for them, and then they can go to town. They can smear, they can blot, whatever they want to do to create their exploding numbers. Okay, you can paint. And you can either dab it on, or you can make streaks, whatever, you can experiment and do what you want. See on the outside, they painted all around the outside of the number. And if you paint the dot too, the dot will show up too. Ooh, I like that, Silas. What color do you want to add to it? Wait, I need a couple. Hmm. You I can mix them. You can mix it if you want, you can experiment. Yeah. Just like they had orange and yellow. There you go. Ooh, I like that, Silas. Very creative. What? Oh, yeah. Can I do number six? Wait, can I mix them? Sure. They could even use these pom-poms if they wanted to, to paint with. Then, you simply peel off the numbers. Go from this side. Okay. And you have a beautiful piece of artwork. Look at your exploding numbers! Do ah. you like it? Yeah. <laughs> Silas, you could see the little light bulbs going off in his head as he looked at the stickers and could count all the objects. Or when he saw the colors in the paint, he would go around and say, this color is this, and this is this color. Blue, mm -hmm. blue, blue. This is dark. Hmm, what does it look Wait, like? Wait, yellow and orange mix. It does look like a mix. He also started adding all the things together on the plate. He really had a lot of fun doing it. You can also take some pom-poms, which are really fun. Fun for little fingers to hold these and use those little fine motor skills. Have them put on the page, corresponding with each number. This is also a great way to teach your little one how to do some simple addition. See your squishy pom-poms over here? Yeah. Okay, how many pom-poms equal the number zero? Would you use any pom-poms? No, zero. Because it's nothing, right? Okay, so how many do we need for this number? One. All right, find a pom-pom. Oranges. Oh, you can use orange. How many do you have? Two. Two. And what number are you going to put them by? Two. Two. Good job. Ooh, very creative on each side of the number. Using manipulatives is a great way for children to connect the brain to the body. It's something that they can visualize so that they don't have to just think in their head about what you're speaking about, but they can actually see it as well. You can count as well. Twelve. Think of it in my head. <laughs> Silas obviously had so much fun doing this activity. He especially loved painting as he got to choose what colors he got to paint on the numbers. So grab some paint, paper, and have fun with your child exploring numbers. Yay, look, look here, Silas. Cheese! Cheese. Hello everyone, today we're gonna make a liquid density tower. This will teach us about density. Ooh, I love this density. Okay, put it in very slowly. It floats! There's a lot that floats. Let's go! The supplies you'll need for this activity 
glass vase, honey, corn syrup, maple syrup, whole milk, dish soap, water, vegetable oil, rubbing alcohol, lamp oil, mixing cups, turkey baster, food coloring, bolt, popcorn kernel, dye, cherry tomato, bead, soda bottle cap, ping pong ball, dry erase board, dry erase marker. Come on, you guys. Do you know what we're gonna make today? What? What? We're gonna make something called a liquid density tower. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Put your goggles on. We're gonna be mad scientists. <laughs> to begin making your liquid density tower, first measure out equal parts of all nine liquid ingredients. Don't forget to add some food coloring to the water and rubbing alcohol to make the colors pop. Okay, first we're gonna use the honey and we're gonna use all these materials. We're gonna layer them all the way up in this, this glass jar, okay? But we're gonna have to use the same amount. You know why we're putting them in this order? Why? why? Because we're learning about density and what do you think each one of these things has um, that are different? Uh, I think we're that going this in this is order. The, I think that this is the heaviest, so it'll go straight to the bottom. Let's see. This one's a little lighter than the honey, so it will float on top. Then carefully pour the first three layers: the honey, the corn syrup, and then the maple syrup. Can you measure some honey in there? Yep. Make sure you stay at 88 ounces. Okay. Alright, that's good, my fine. I think that's good. Okay. What can you tell between the difference? You took, how long did it take you to pour, McLean? It took me like three minutes. <laughs> it took you a little longer, didn't it? All right, let's try pouring them in our tower, okay? Okay. We're gonna check right in the middle so that we don't get this it on the sides. Good. You wanna scrape the rest of it out? You can get a little bit more out. Time for some corn syrup. And try corn to pour it just slowly right to down. the middle. See if we can, slower. This looks so cool. Can you see it separating, Reese? Yeah. It will separate. Look at my creation! <laughs> For the milk and the other ingredients, carefully use a turkey baster and squeeze it lightly against the side of the container. This way, each layer layers neatly on top. So with the milk, then we're gonna do same measurement, eight ounces. Hi. Just squeeze it and then Put it in the straight baster? down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then just when you squeeze it, squeeze it down the side. Like, down the side? Yeah, I'm gonna squeeze it where it runs down the side. Cause we're good. Yeah, like that. Liquid dish soap. You're a messy scientist. Haha. <laughs> All science has messy bits. Will it mix in with the milk we just did? I don't know. Let's see. What do you think? I think it will. Do you think the dish soap is more dense than the milk. <gasps> Whoa. Whoa! I would have thought the dish soap was more dense than the milk, wouldn't you? Oh, you can see yeah, it going it. down from the milk. Ooh, I love this density. It's so cool. Now with water, remember we want to make it colorful. So what color should we make the water? <gasps> blue. Oh, can I make it blue? Sure. Just right, how many blue. drops do you think we need? Two. Two. Let's try. Wow. Okay, this is going to be great. It's very dark. It's kind of mixing with the yellow. But it looks really cool. It's you can see it going up from the milk. It's like, okay. I think that if we just let it sit there for quite a while, then it will go back up to the very top. Density can be a really hard concept for kids to understand. That's why building a tower like this is a great hands-on experiment to help them kind of understand what it means. Would yeah. you have thought that vegetable oil was less dense than water or milk? I would, I pretty much thought that this would be at the bottom beside honey and this would the water would be on the top because water is very light less dense okay, what color are we gonna do for this red oh wow okay okay so let's oh it's gone look at it you can see it well, yeah so we know this one can, we don't have to be as careful because it looks like it's hopping down and then separating pretty pretty immediate oh look at this in the middle, it looks like a rainbow. And now you've got a liquid density tower. I can see all nine layers, can you? No, I can Some see of them blue. blended. Yeah, but and what does that tell us if they blended? That then it was a kind of a little bit. That those densities were very similar. <laughs> <laughs> Want to take this activity to the next level? Try taking small objects from around your house and dropping them in the container. Even make your own predictions and see where they land. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put some items in there and we're gonna see where they go okay so over here is our chart you see our prediction chart yep we're gonna try to predict where each part is gonna go okay so first we have a bolt feel it is it heavy or light it's kind of heavy and it's really hard hard and heavy a metal which 
level do you think the bolt is going to go to? You think it's going to go to the honey. Uh -huh. Okay, so you said honey. Ren, where do you think it's going to go? Water. Water? Okay, mm -hmm. that would be here. You think it's going to go to the water. I think it's going to fall to the milk. I think it's going to go to the syrup. You think which syrup? Corn the syrup? Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Okay. You want to drop it in very gently because it is metal. We don't want the glass it's to break. So let's be see what in it the does. Honey. Put it right in the middle. You think it's going to go to the honey? Oh goodness! Where'd it go? The honey. It went to the syrup. No, it went it to looks the like it went to the very bottom. The very. Okay, so that was not as hard as these items. This is the one we're going to do next. What does it feel like? Don't drop it. It's so heavy because it's so soft. It's so soft and smooth and small. Mm -hmm. well, where's this popcorn kernel gonna go? I think it's gonna go to the lamp oil. I think it's gonna go I to the soap. I think it's gonna okay, go so to Reese the Okay, so Reese says lamp oil. Take the popcorn kernel and can you drop it in there? Drop it right Where's it gonna go? <gasps> Where'd it go? In the black. Oh, we can't see it. It's hiding. It's, it's in the half in the milk and it's half in the maple syrup. What? Isn't that cool? Making predictions is a great way to boost your child's learning. They can take what they've learned and then make educated guesses and predict where they think the object will fall. Uh -huh. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is the die. It feels hard and light. It feels light? Okay, where do you think it's gonna fall? Do you think it's as heavy as the bolt? Right to the front? Oh, well, look at all those levels. I see it, it's right there. Reese, where do you think that tomato's gonna go? I think it's gonna go in the vegetable oil. In the vegetable oil, okay. It's right there, I can see it. It's right there in the dish soap. What's the next item, McLean? Can you read it on the board? It's a bead. A bead. It's really light and it's really hard. Let's Try. see where a bead falls. It floats. It floats oh, all wow. the way up. Um, Why do you think it floats all the way to the top? That it's very, very light. Did you notice something about the bead? It has a hole in it. It has a hole in it. So what does that mean? So that means it has to stay up in the air. Well, there's some air maybe in there and it's keeping it afloat. We hope you and your family had fun making your own liquid density tower. Don't forget to tell us how it went in the comments below and share with us what you learned with the Show Me How community. Thanks for watching. Hey, what other object would you pick if you were picking something different? A crown. I, a crayon? <laughs> crayon. Oh, I wonder if a I crayon would float. I whoa, whoa. <laughs> what is this? Is this mail? Or is it lunch? I think it's mayo. So we're gonna take it out of your mouth. But they both start with M. Hi, I'm Jennifer, and this is my daughter Sterling. Hi. Hi. She's one year old, and she isn't talking much yet, but she understands a lot. One easy way to boost her understanding is to talk to her about anything. I'll show you how. Sterling is very curious. Yeah. So no matter what I'm doing, I try to talk to her about it. Or you talk to me about it. Let's look through the mail. Yeah? Let's see. You seem to... Oh. You found a bill. Yeah. You want to you wanna pay the bill? And then... Ooh. This looks like an invitation. Yeah. Oh, there's... So, oh, thank you. You're helping me sort the mail? Oh. All right, let's see. What else do we have? Mama. Ooh. Oh, what's this? Mm. Mm? Nana. Yes, it is from Nana. It is from Nana. Dear Sterling, I'm having such a good time in Paris. Oh, you want to fly away with Nana? Let's see, what else does she say to us? That's such a pretty picture. Such a pretty postcard. May I see it? No, you want it all for yourself. This is all mail. Lots of letters, they come through the post office. Mail has stamps. And mail comes in all different shapes and sizes, like people. Would you like to open this note? Yeah. Yes, let's open this piece of mail together. Let's look, there's so much. Oh, you're gonna hold on to it? All right, why don't you hold on to that piece of mail? All right, let's open this piece. This is an invitation from our friend. Let's open it together. Let's open this mail. Yeah, let's see. It's 
inside. Oh, yeah. Dear ah. Sterling. Babies and kids are sensitive. They feel the tone in your voice. That's why it's so important to talk to them about what you're doing. They hear a calm, happy voice, and they feel safe. Sometimes you can even calm them when they're fussy. Let's make mom some tea, huh? Which one? Oh, you're ready for some tea. Are you a tea drinker? All right, let's look and see what kinds we have. We have green tea, Earl Grey, or English breakfast. Oh, it looks like all three are winners. Let's see. Around town. Oh, you just want to eat up New York City, don't you? Just want to eat it all up. Will you follow along with me? Ooh, Arbor Weekend at Wave Hill. I love Wave Hill. Oh, let's go. Seems like you're ready for a trip. Feel free to use big words. You'll be amazed at what kids listen to. And remember, there's more to your talking than the words you say. Babies hear the tone, rhythm, and feeling in your voice. And all of those teach them how to talk. Ooh, Sterling, there's an airplane. And there are lots of buildings. And there are trees. Even in New York, there are trees. Do you hear that car? They look so tiny from here. Hmm. How many buildings do you see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know, I can't even count that high. What else? Ooh, there's a pigeon. There's a pigeon flying across so we know it is New York City. What else? Talking to your baby or young child is one of the easiest and best ways to grow more connections in their brains. How do you talk to your baby? Show the world by hashtagging photos and videos with Mother Goose Club or commenting below. And subscribe to be the first to learn about new releases. All right, Chatterboxes, get out there and start talking. <laughs> Ooh, what's up there? <laughs> really? Oh, you do love doing laundry. Yes, that's mail. And that's mail on the floor. More mail on the floor. Yes, throw out our bills. Because like Sterling's great. It's just... It's just this other one. <laughs> Let's look at it oh, together. Oh, someone's sleepy. Talking to... How do you talk to your truck? All right, chatterboxes. Ah! Yeah. Oh, you did. Okay. Baby escape. Baby escape. <laughs> Anything. Baby. Oh, you're very close to the edge. You're very close to the edge. Ah! All right. Yeah. Wow. Let's make some tea. Woo! You ready for some tea? I'll show you how. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi, Yeah, I was to wait. <laughs> she's one year old, so she isn't talking much yet. Uh, but she understands, or maybe she uh, is. Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to be doing a read aloud with my son Lachlan of the book Dinosaur Stomp. He's excited about it and I gotta tell you I am too. Reading at home is an opportunity to explore their interest and gain a love of reading. During this series we give you tips and tricks on how to bring reading to life for you and your little ones. So let's get to it. Today's book is an adaptation of the popular Mother Goose Club song, Dinosaur Stomp. We love this one and we love to get up and get active and if you have a chance with your kids, there's some really cool dances that go along with it. Ah, it's just the moment we've been waiting for. It's Dinosaur Stomp by Harry and Sana Jo. Are you ready? Yeah, all right, let's check it out. Let's see what's going on in dinosaur land. Mary and Eep are playing dinosaurs. Did you? Dinosaurs. Oh yeah, that's right. It's time for a snack. What will they eat? What color is that? Oh. Oh yeah? Nice. The Dinosaur Stomp is a great reading resource. It teaches your kids entertaining rhymes and new vocabulary through repetition and movement. What's she doing? 
thinking. She is thinking, that's right. Vegetables. Did you know that some dinosaurs ate only veggies? Did you know that? Did you know that? Do you eat your greens? Yeah. You do? No. No, so we eat uh, broccoli. We eat broccoli, we eat, we eat a lot of kale. You eat kale? You eat your kale, most days. I don't like kale. Oh, well, you know what? You'll grow out of that. You gotta eat your veggies. You wanna get big, strong like a dinosaur. <laughs> All right, so. Okay. <laughs> Dinosaurs have great big feet that stomp, stomp, stomp. Do you know where your feet are? <laughs> there you go, yeah. That's stomp, 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 that's right. Dinosaurs have great big, what are those? Teeth. Teeth. That chomp, chomp, chomp. Can chomp. you? Yeah, there you go. As you're reading, be sure to focus on highlighting new vocabulary and rhyming words. Using a call and response method is a great way to get your kid to participate. I'm a saurus, stomp, stomp. You're a saurus, chomp, chomp. I wanna, I wanna turn into a blue one. You wanna turn into a blue one? Well then, you have to practice your chomp, chomp. Dinosaurs have great big claws. Can you show me claws? Let me see your claws. Come on, man, you gotta have claws. Hey, there you go, claws. Oh, which one? Red one. <laughs> there you go, yeah, that's right. Dinosaurs have great big jaws that munch, munch, munch. What do you like to munch on, Lachlan? Anything. Anything? Show me how you munch. <laughs> there you go, yeah. There are so many benefits to reading books at home. It helps kids learn decision making by choosing the book of the day. They have the opportunity to read at their own pace. You can dig deep, you can recognize patterns, and explore their interest. It inspires a love of reading and learning. Look at her, look at her, look at her crunch face. You make a crunch face? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, 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 munch. Oh no, don't no, munch me. That's not the game. If you have a chance, be sure to check out the Mother Goose Club video for Dinosaur Stomp. It'll give your kids a chance to chomp and stomp on their own a little bit, and you can incorporate some of the moves while you're reading the book. And what's that? Dinosaur. And what's that? Dinosaur. And what's that? Dinosaur. And this is the word. What do you think that word right there says? Uh. Dinosaur. Yes, good job, man. You read the most important word in the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You chomp, yeah, just chomp, chomp them all. all yeah, just chomp them. Yeah, yeah. The, thanks for playing dinosaurs with us. Yeah, see, that's it. You, you, you got the hang of it now. Goodbye. After you read the book the first time, ask them if they'd like to read it again. And maybe this time you can trade off on some of the speaking parts. It'll get them to be more comfortable with the material and get them to participate. Construction paper, scissors, glue stick, paper clips. I want you to help me make these hats over here. Can you, make, can you help me make these hats? Do you have a few minutes today? I don't have a paper. Well, I'm gonna give you, would you like a paper? I like a piece of paper. We are going to be creating dinosaur hats for our book, Dinosaur Stomp. You'll take your construction paper and you're gonna hold it vertically and then you're going to cut an inch, inch and a half long pieces. These pieces will come out looking like this and these pieces will be used for your headband and for your spine. And then you'll cut it. You cut as straight as you can, okay? And it doesn't matter if, if you don't do it perfect, you just do your best, okay? Okay, so go ahead and cut your strips. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, okay? And then you're gonna take two other pieces of construction paper and you're gonna cut them horizontally. And you're gonna get 10 strips about two inches wide, like this. Yeah, now put your fingers there. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, you like the grip? You like the grip? Yeah, see, it's different, right? Yeah, it's a whole different thing. Oh, see, now you got more control, more power. DIY crafts are obviously a lot of fun, but crafting with tools like scissors, glue, paper clips, and those types of things are an opportunity for your kids to develop their fine motor skills. Along with following directions, this activity becomes really, really good for listening and communication skills as well. But most importantly, this gives you an opportunity to spend time together and get creative. 
Yeah! <laughs> good, good job, dude. Daddy. You'll end up with these a uh, little bit fatter uh, strips, and these will become your spikes. And how we make those, we're gonna fold these over, and maybe about a half inch up, you wanna start cutting them into a triangle. I want you to look something. Will you inspect something for me? You know what it means to inspect? Inspect means to look at it closely and determine whether or not it's working. Look, look, Lachlan. I'm gonna go about a half inch. Do you know how big an inch is? Do you? You do. Can you show me? Look here, bud. An inch is about this big, okay? Then we're gonna do a half inch. It's about that big. Is it about this big? Well, that's a few inches. <laughs> so after you have your spike, you're going to take your spine and you're going to put these two pieces together. So you throw a little glue right here. And then you're going to put this on there. Start up, start up here. And then you stand your spikes up. And you're going to glue this together. Take a paper clip and that will hold it together while the glue dries. We'll do that over and over and over again 10 times. Then you're going to attach it to the front of the headband like so. And it will give you a wonderful, magical dinosaur headband. Lachlan, can you say roar? And I crown you king of the dinosaurs? Roar! Roar! That's very good. Ta da! How do you feel about that? I make this one fit your head a little bit better, but I think you look great. You feel great? You look great. <laughs> King of the dinosaurs, give me one more roar. <laughs> yes, excellent. That's all for today. We hope these videos help you incorporate reading into your everyday life. For more activities and tips on reading, be sure to check out some of our other videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, be sure to leave them in the comments or even just to let us know what reading means to you and your family. Thanks again for watching.